I wasn't planning on putting out a video this early Friday morning, but well, I've got some news that you're going to want to know about. I know Fridays we generally don't have a lot of news, but this is all referencing that virtual press conference that Canon is having next week. It's the one that's being held on January the 19th. It's an early morning one on Wednesday, January the 19th at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. That's New York or Toronto time. And this virtual press conference that Canon is having on Wednesday is going to be a big one. A couple of days ago, I told you that Canon's going to be announcing the Canon R5C. Now the R5C is a video centric version of the R5 and I'll cover off more detail about that shortly. But Canon's also got some other really big announcements and I'm going to cover those off after the R5. Okay, back to the R5, sorry, the R5C. In a nutshell, the R5C is a video centric version of the R5, much the same way that the Sony FX3 is a video centric version of the A7S3, which is pretty much a video centric camera in itself. The R5C is going to have the same stills capabilities as the R5. It's going to have the same video capabilities as the R5, but it's going to excel in a couple of key areas. And you probably already know this if you've been watching my channel and subscribing. The R5C is going to have the same, the same video modes and resolutions, but it's going to be able to record in 8K up to 30 frames per second, and it's Cinema Raw Light XF, AVC, and MP4 Unlimited. That's right, unlimited. Now, I'm assuming they're going to remove that record limit, that silly record limit, but there's definitely going to be no overheat limit. So unlimited recording on the R5C, and that's kind of a big deal. Other than that, there's not a huge amount of differences. Now, architecturally, to make this happen, the body size is a little bigger. It's got active cooling, and the LCD is placed in a slightly different place. It will have time code in and out, and it will have a full-size HDMI port. But as far as C-Log goes, well, it's going to have C-Log 3 just like the R5. Although Canon Rumors thinks that maybe Canon Log 2 might go in this camera as well. And at the time when he posted this information, it was a definite maybe they were considering it. Now here we are, it's Friday, we got the weekend, and then Monday and Tuesday. And so far we haven't had any confirmation or any leaks coming from Canon like they have done in the past or any hints as to what the R5C was going to have, or even that the R5C is the camera. Well, we do know because Canon UK, when they put out the photo, uh, they didn't scrub the, um, the file name, and it shows R5C teaser 01. So we know that it is the R5C that is coming out on Wednesday. So what else will it have? Well, it's going to have IBIS. It's going to have all the same capabilities. It's going to have a 45 megapixel sensor, the same sensor, the same processor. Nothing really has changed here. Could they weak, tweak the firmware a little bit? Sure, it definitely could be. Could we be in store for another firmware update for the R5? Who knows? Will the R5 do away with a record limit in a firmware update? I would, if that is going to happen, it should come in a firmware update on or shortly thereafter this announcement, or at least when the R5C shows up, because if it does do away with that 30 minute record limit, I couldn't imagine them doing unlimited 8K in terms of overheat and not scrubbing that record limit as well. And if they do that, there's no reason why they can't scrub the record limit on the R5. Yes, you still have the overheat modes, but I get that because you want to protect the camera, but there's, by having an arbitrary 30 minute record limit, you're not protecting anybody. So the R5C looks to be an incredible camera, and have I left anything out? Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, unlike the R5, the R5C is going to have the same multi-purpose hot shoe that came with the R3. And I think I've got that LCD placement, different, yep, full-size HDMI port. Oh, and the, I, one thing I forgot to mention is the mounting points. It has three-quarter inch and one-quarter inch mounting on top for the EV, or by the EVF, so that's the R5C. But I already talked about that in previous videos. So the other big news, do you remember we talked about NAB 2021 and Canon was planning to release two 8K cinema cameras. One of them was going to be a Super 35 and one was going to be full frame and they're both going to use DGO sensors. Uh, one of them would have around 16 stops of dynamic range. The other would have about 17 stops of dynamic range. Um, they would be able to shoot 4K 60, sorry, not 4K 60, 8K up to 60 frames per second, 4K 120, 
And these were pretty powerful uh, units. They were going to use dual DIVIC DG DV8 processors and um, 10 millisecond readout times. And alongside that, at NAB, they were also supposed to release a 4K camera with up to 240 frames per second in fast mode and 120 frames per second in standard mode. And I assume that would provide you with more detail as well. But this camera would provide 20 stops of dynamic range. So those three cameras that were, and this was back in April, Canon Rumors had said, look, we're going to be getting these three cameras on high credibility at NAB 2021. Well, NAB was canceled and we didn't hear anything about these cameras. And 2021, Canon scrubbed a lot of cameras. The, the cinema cameras that were supposed to come out, uh, the APS-C cameras that were supposed to come out, uh, as well as the C50 and the C90, we didn't hear anything about them. And what Canon Rumors had previously said is that a lot of the cameras that were scrubbed haven't been completely canceled. They've been taken back to the drawing board, tweaked. And so we might see an update on these cinema cameras based on what we had heard previously on Canon Rumors. So Canon could be tweaking them up. So <laughs> you're probably going to want to get up early in the morning for this. Uh, if, if you're in Europe, uh, definitely not that early. And of course, if you're in Asia, well, you probably just had a chance to have dinner. You might want to have dinner a little early because this is probably going to be around 7 or between 6 and 8 o'clock in the evening. But for us on the East Coast, at 7 o'clock in the morning, and this is looking to be a really, really big announcement. So we've got the R5C. That should take up a good amount of time. And then we have a bunch of cinema cameras. And it looks like, as far as 8K video goes, Canon is going all in on 8K, as Craig said. Uh, we're, yes, I get it. The R3 didn't have 8K, um, but it's purpose-built differently. It's not all about video. Uh, but 8K is becoming very, very um, dominant, and these cameras are going to be capable of 8K60, like the Nikon Z9. But keep in mind, the Nikon Z9 is a still hybrid cameras, whereas these are both cinema cameras. So that's really, really exciting. But wait, there's more. If you happen to own the C70, there's going to be a firmware update for the C70. And uh, you know what? I didn't even bother to look into details because I, if I remember correctly, there really weren't that many details on what the firmware update for the C70 was going to be. Personally, I'd rather see a C, C5, an R5 firmware update uh, shortly after this too. And yeah, the, so Canon will announce a new firmware for the Canon Cinema EOS C70. The new firmware will add RAW. Okay, that is a big deal but we don't know if it's internal or external. So, James Jackson Films, are you, have you already picked up on this? RAW, you've already got the C70, a beautiful camera, to be able to shoot RAW. Although, I wish this camera had CF Express cards, because if you're shooting RAW, that's an awful lot of data. It's going to take a while to get off, but I know, you're, James, you're probably going to be running a Ninja off that, and that's what I would be doing too. If you're going to shoot RAW on the C70, you're going to need some sort of external monitor like the Ninja 5, or you're going to have to wait hours to move your content off those SD cards. So really, really awesome time. I don't... Oh, one other thing too. Apparently we're supposed to get a whole bunch of lenses as well. It doesn't really say which. But again, 2021 was rather a bit of a letdown. We were expecting a lot, especially when it came to, came to telephoto and super telephoto lenses. I personally am very interested in the rumored 1200 and 2000 millimeter. Uh, but there's also a lot of other good lenses there. And I was just recently interested in picking up the EF 100 to 400 uh, first version. But um, yeah, I didn't get the email in time and I missed out. But uh, I was gonna, looking at picking that up for about $600 US or 1000 Canadian. So I guess I'll just have to try again. But yeah, a really, really big day. I know I'm rambling on what? Well, I'm at about 10 minutes. That's not too bad. But it, it's late here. It's currently, I said it's... Um, Friday, January the 14th, and by the time you watch it, it will be. Right now, my time, it's 22.39. And I thought, you know what, I've got a busy day tomorrow. I don't want to be shooting this early in the morning. Let's get it taken care of at night. Let's get it out there for you. So if you're waking up in Asia right now, you've got a nice little gift waiting for you right here. And of course, in Europe, you'll be waking up shortly. And um, yeah, pretty exciting news. So this, is, this would be a really big deal. I was kind of expecting the cinema cameras to be announced right around NAB 2021, but this has got to be one of the biggest announcements Canon has ever made in January. This is a big punch to the year. I, and I can already see it on YouTube. I can see the analytics. You can see that the, 
Um, the cents per thousand views has dropped almost in half. December is a big month. You see a lot of uh, revenue in terms of cents per thousand views. And then all of a sudden, it's part of the way through January, like the first week, all of a sudden, everything falls off and doesn't start to pick up until February. And that tells you something. Everybody's knackered out from Christmas. Everybody's bought stuff. Nobody's really buying anything. So advertisers don't advertise so much. So the cost to advertise goes down. But I think Canon is changing that a little bit here. We're going to have some really big announcements. Um, what does that leave us for the rest of the year? Well, again, we've got those APS-C cameras, right? We, where is that? Where are the APS-C cameras coming? Or when are they coming? Could we get? Could we be getting it on the heels of CP Plus? And of course, Canon can start teasing about the R1 anytime from I would say late January to well. I wouldn't go much later than February. If we follow what they did with the R5, they basically teased us for about five months. It was an awful lot of fun. They kept teasing stuff every four or five weeks, and it made that very, very interesting and really drummed up a lot of attention and got me an awful lot of subscribers at the same point. But in 2021, Canon was very tight-lipped. They didn't really let much leak at all. We got very little coming out, almost nothing on the R1. But in 2022, I'm hoping that changes. And if it does, we, at the earliest, we can start to expect rumors, uh, highly credible rumors coming out on the R1 as late as the end of January. And of course, we've got the Winter Olympics coming up. So we'll be keeping an eye out to see if the R1, <laughs> or as Panasonic says, a camera that shall not be named, because Canon hasn't named anything at this point, if the R1 will show up or a body that's got their the name and number hidden in some degree whatsoever let's just keep an eye out for that because if we see a canon camera at the olympics and it's got the the model name covered up that tells you it's probably the r1 so we get the r1 we got aps-c cameras i don't really expect anything on the efm mount i kind of think that that's being put out to pasture and what else the 90D, it's been a few years since it's been out. I don't think it's ready for a refresh. And I think that when that gets refreshed, it'll be an R system camera body. What else? I know I'm leaving something. Oh, yes. And of course, the RP. Uh, there'll be a replacement for the RP. And there'll be a camera that sits somewhere between the RP and the R6. So there's a lot to come out with Canon giving us so much right now. I wonder if they're clearing room to make way for a whole bunch of announcements in CP Plus timeframe to late May. We'll just have to wait and see, but it's super exciting. But I please ask you to do me one favor. Please go ahead and like and subscribe. Now the subscribe, it doesn't take much effort. Just, just reach over. I know if you're watching TV, that's the worst. Even when I watch TV, I don't like to hit subscribe because you have to pick up the row and do all that stuff. But if you're at your computer, click subscribe. It not only helps us channel grow, but I take it as a virtual pat on the back and it's when I see the channel growing as I have been over the last couple of years, that's one of the reasons why I get out when it is almost 11 o'clock at night to produce content for you. So please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section down below. Right after I publish a video, I'm usually very good at responding to all questions and I quite often comment on most of the comments as well. So thank you so much for watching. That's it for now. We'll see you again soon.